Hello everyone. A little message for you about your guides. If you have been interested in connecting with your guides or if you are hoping to make that connection with your guides, I want you to know that everyone has a guide and that they are all there waiting to connect with you. So I have met with individuals who said, I'm pretty sure I don't have a guide. I've never heard from them. I've never gotten any messages, visions, feelings. And then I go in and I have experienced them. And the message that I receive from these guides is that you as an individual have to be in a place where you can meet them on the frequency level that they want to meet you or that they need to be able to meet you at. So that means making sure that you are in a place of receiving, a place that's open, surrender. And sometimes that looks like for us going into meditation, um, making sure that we're doing things that are offering us self-care. And self-care can look so many different ways for everyone. For me, that means going into the garden and having some quiet time, picking weeds, planting seeds, watering my garden. That grounds me. It helps clear my energy, my thoughts, my mind, and then I become an open receptacle for messages from my guides. Know that our guides are always wanting to support us and make connection to us. It's just a two-way street. So we can't show up and say, okay, I'm ready, and then expect for them to come to us. We also have to do the work for them to be able to meet us and give us messages. So part of that work that us as humans have to do is that we have to make sure that we have clear minds that are open to receiving messages. So if we are always in mom mode, running our to-do list saying, oh, I need to go grocery store, I have to pick up diapers, I need to do the dishes, Joey likes oranges, Clancy likes apples, and I don't have any, so I need to do this, and then I have to do the school list and blah, blah. All of these things are blocking our ability to connect to our guides. So when we run the to-do list and we get caught up in the daily routine of life, we don't allow enough space in for us to connect to our guides. So if you are pining for that connection, make sure that you're setting aside time. Now, time does not mean that you have to put aside 30 minutes to have this really deep meditation. Not at all. It just means, and you don't even have to be in meditation when you connect with them. Somewhere like the shower is a perfect place to meet a guide because water is a conduit, the shower is relaxing, and generally in the shower, I know for me, it's just like a big deep breath. <sighs> and letting it all go. So at that time, I also receive a lot of messages and downloads from my guides. So try to practice this when you feel like you have the clear mental capacity to invite your guides in, offer them a platform to speak to you. And when guides do speak, it doesn't always make sense. That's okay. It doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. In fact, this is validation that you're doing it right when you receive messages that don't make sense. When I was starting out, I would get a pen and a notepad and I would just let the words flow. Words didn't make sense that were going together. They didn't form full sentences and I just continued to write. Anything that came up in my head, if I saw water, tears, toilet, leaves, letters, numbers, put it all down. And then suddenly the words started to make sense. So it's when you are open to just putting it on the page, you are going to quickly be able to make sense of the messages that are coming through. Sometimes when they tell you things, it doesn't always make sense at that time, but then you'll receive validation later. And it could be later in the day, it could be a week later but know that these messages were meant to come through at that time for a reason. We don't always have to understand what our guides are telling us, but we do always have to trust them. If we begin to question what they're sharing with us, 
that's when we start to put a block between us and our guides. Another thing that guides will do is they will speak to us in random thought forms. So when we find ourselves in a moment going, wow, that was really random. Why did I just think of that person? Or why did they just show me that place? Or um, why am I remembering this memory? This is your guides giving you messages. Try not to question it and go, oh man, my thought, my brain is so random. I'm so scrambled right now. Try to slow down. Bring your awareness to this random thought and then lean into it because there might be more that your guide has to share with you about this thought. Another way that guides speak to us is through our feelings, gut feelings, heart feelings. Um, if you feel things in your full body, like a full body, yes, this is your guide speaking to you. So something as simple as driving down the street, should I turn left or right? If you feel a full body yes about right, then turn right. When you question it and say, oh, but, um, and your analytical mind starts to step in, but when I take a left, that's a quicker way and you don't have to hit the stop sign. There's not so many stoplights, but you don't know what's on the left side that's making your guides tell you to go to the right. So building that trust again is so important for being a clear vessel for communication for your guides and receiving the messages that they're offering to you. If you are interested in connecting with your guides, DM me. I have many sessions where I can mentor you and introduce you to your guides, help support you through this process,